<laughs> so what do I do? Kiki. <laughs> 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 I'm starving! I'm doing it now! And they were so embarrassing. I, I've never posted them. Because they were so Let me see your abs. <laughs> yeah. Find someone behind you, in front of you, and I want you to tell them. What COVID was the last year I competed. So I haven't competed in four years. I think that there's some fear with it's okay. So I, I think, think it's that uh, you mentioned quite a bit about standing for practice. That Dolly Parton's path to success is kind of one that you have to go on as well. Happy days, friends. Welcome back if this is your first time here. Hi, my name is Vanessa and I go by That Girl Squats and this is my YouTube channel. It has been a while, fam. I am so sorry. The last time that we talked was on Super Bowl Sunday, and that was also the same weekend of our Nashville trip, which is what we're going to be talking about today. So in Nashville, we went to the Iron House Gym, and we were a part of the Against the Grain podcast charity event. They were able to raise over $5,000 for the Vanderbilt Foundation, which is very near and dear to the owner of the Iron House Gym. Feel very lucky, very fortunate to have been invited to be a part of it. Thank you, Daniel Coffeen, for letting us be a part of it. You guys will get to see a little bit of the highlights and just like what we did that weekend. Because the first day we went out and we got a workout in, we went to his house and his house meeting Jeff's, the owners, and then we were able to meet some of the other speakers before the big event that started on Friday. So we spent all day Friday, all day Saturday. Big shout out to the Scooby team because they showed out and they had all of their coaches there. It was really cool to meet them and interact with them. We got a lot of fun footage, a lot of fun photos and everything. So if you haven't yet, go follow They Got Shots on Instagram because that is going to be where we put a lot of our photography videography stuff. They will also be posted on my page as well, but you know, like sometimes I might just put other things on that page too. And we are taking in clients, so for all of the other upcoming bodybuilding shows that we'll be working at, because another big announcement that I haven't really shouted out yet is that we're working with Battle Up Media and we are a part of the Battle Up Media team, which is really awesome, really cool, and I'm just, so fucking thrilled to be a part of the team and it just it's been something that i've been working up to for a long time and it's just kind of like all falling into place which is really nice but we'll talk a little bit more about that later so let's get into the video
myself critical, I'd be like, dying down to 800 calories, and she'd be 18. <laughs> Starving! <laughs> you ripped apart you, you one of my photos one time on Instagram. I was like, I, I needed this. Oh, <laughs> I love this. You know, I needed it. He's like, this is kind of like double sucks. He's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> J3U, I know that John has been a part of our seminars before. Uh, so we are glad to have them back. He is a knowledge base of things that confused me last night. But if I probably hired him, maybe I would have not got such a shitty place in my show's now. But I got my stage shots. And they were so embarrassing. I, I've never posted them because they were so bad. My physique was good, but my posing was terrible. I'm the lead posing educator, and you're going to be like, that's not a job. And my mom would say, you're right, that's not a job. Because <laughs> all I do is stare at dudes in their underwear all day long. The most common posing mistakes always take place in the quarter turns. The quarter turns are the first impression that you give to the judges. We go through all these poses joint by joint. That's the best way to assess them. So we always start at the foot and ankle joint, then we move up to the knee joint. And in the knee joint, if you have too much knee flexion, you're gonna wash out the quads. If you have too little knee flexion, you just look kind of weird standing up there. In, in, in bodybuilding, like it doesn't really matter what division you're in, you always wanna make sure that you have the appearance of this really small waist. And the way we do that is by pushing the hips back. Let me see your abs. <laughs> yeah, Larry looks good. All right, you can see where that lat starts right here. And when he internally rotates that shoulder, since it inserts on the front side of his shoulder, those lats kind of come out with it. Right? So right. when we see people doing poses like this, like that doesn't make a ton of sense. That'd be like hitting a front double biceps like, like this. Like it, it just doesn't make any sense. You want one side of the body to mirror the other side. That's what symmetry is. It's also upper and lower. Transitions are kind of beyond the scope of what we'll talk about today, but to simply just like understand this analogy, like when a boxer is in a boxing ring, right? He always protects his chin, okay? The second he drops his hands, he's gonna get knocked out. So a chin to a boxer is like the belly to a bodybuilder. Right, like the second you drop your hands and you let that belly hang out and you start belly breathing, like you're done, it's over. Being, uh, like do a very oxygen demanding event and you don't have a breathing plan, right? Like you don't know how many breaths you're gonna take out there. You don't know when you're supposed to breathe in the pose. You don't know when you're supposed to breathe in the transition and, and you wanna become a professional. Like man, professionals plan those things. Right, so it's really important to have a breathing plan for transitions, for no, uh, in, in certain poses, how do you breathe in this pose versus how do you breathe in this pose? Because it's not all the same. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that. Yeah, I'm feeling it for people that just didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah. Because when I started, I didn't know either. Oh, I remember going yeah. bodybuilding yeah. forums and having to like look at people's pictures and they had like little. No. Oh, I remember all that. I don't you didn't know. But it's like the, the symmetry, like your, like the arrows and just like the lines and like that connects with me a lot more. Just like, like, yeah, more the analytical approach is a lot easier for me to understand the different parts of the frame. Yeah, yeah. 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 I started training. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
I, it's the biggest waste of time of my day. It's sitting there, shoveling that bullshit in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> That means like two and a half hours a day. Pissing me right off. I really wish I wasn't dieting. Yeah? Yeah. Why? So you could have had that taco bar? No, but it would just be fun to like go out. Wait, things? Yeah. I like usually make a very large research. Either of those ones. The Olympia I did. Oh, nice. Yeah. We went to um, Brazilian Steakhouse. Yum. Yeah. Those are always uh, the idea of the Brazilian Steakhouse is always better than the actual product. Yeah. It depends on the on the steak because I've had some shitty ones and I've had some really good ones. Yeah, like uh, I never eat as much as I thought I was gonna eat though. Yeah, maybe I'm odd, but a whole bunch of. But they have the bar, the buffet bar. Yeah, but the, the, that's like. That's not, that's not good food. It was, I mean, it, again, it depends on which steakhouse you go to, right? Maybe salad bars, whatever. I don't know. It's not my go to place. Words of wisdom. Uh, when you're sleeping on a couch, couch bed, you're sleeping on a couch bed. Cushions. Take the couch cushions and put them under the mattress. <laughs> Game changer. Yep, it'll change your life. Like maturing wise? Yeah. And uh Do you don't think that that just comes with age and I want to be Daniel Coffee? You are Daniel Coffee. Yeah, it's weird. I don't ever I don't ever film any training stuff. I know. I don't ever film any training stuff. Between like, sets. Like yeah, that guy. I <laughs> oh, we're just rehearsing the things that, that I set up there in my head. Now I wish I could say them all differently. Just overanalyzing the whole situation pretty much at this point? Fuck, man. I like it, dude. Uh. You can do that? I don't get that at all. That's why that's why like this whole YouTube <sighs> training videos is so big. Uh, like watching me watching somebody hit a big set. Right? Or like watching somebody like just like hit a PR, like it doesn't it doesn't do anything. It does nothing for you? Nothing. It makes me want to just jump through the fucking roof and land in the gym.
The guidance counselor? Oh, like, <laughs> so you talk to him about like training and diet and stuff? And no one ever talked to me about that when I was going to supplement stores when I was a kid. No, it was just like, dude, try this weight gainer. 13, we have both been friends, following each other's stories and stuff like that. And I put up, I'm fucking done with bodybuilding. It was because I had a coach who for an entire prep, I ate six meals a day of tilapia oh. and asparagus at every fucking meal. That's how I got the resolution that I got in this case. How many of you are assistant coaches? When I say scalable, it's not just money. It's do I have a framework that I can teach to somebody else to also scale it, right? Find someone behind you, in front of you, and I want you to tell them what is one thing that scares the shit out of you that you want to accomplish this year in your business. And if you're dealing with gym pop, you need to know a lot about keto. And you need to know a lot about metabolic disease. And all this stuff goes hand in hand. So I encourage you all to really listen and keep an open mind because I assure you it's going to be counter to what you normally hear at presentations and seminars. So with that being friend, said, our good friend, Ben and Zavi. COVID was the last year I competed. So I haven't competed in four years. Um, I've been a pro to be able to eight years ago that I went pro. But I want to come back on stage and be competitive but not let internal and external pressures get to me and just keep the mental focus on you know, the task at hand, not the fear of how much the industry has changed or how I'm outdated and old. I think that there's some fear with it's okay. I think it's um, I think it's normal. I think it's something that you, you probably shouldn't run from if it's something that you really want to have peace about and be able to be comfortable with the fear. Uh, I think that you mentioned quite a bit about standards of practice within coping and I've had the honor of meeting quite a few of your athletes now who have been awesome people. And uh, I think that they spoke so highly of some of the like standards of practice that you require an athlete to have to be on your roster as far as like check-in deadlines, what your expectations are, how your progress photos come through. Because you know, lifestyle coaches in here, like we definitely get some crazy check-in photos. Like, <laughs> yeah, you do. Like, have, in a car. Like, like have like weird angles, weird angles. Like I, I, I literally have had to record a video to tell them how to set up their camera between the light and the natural sort. Like it's crazy, but obviously you have this standard right off the gate. And obviously competitors are different than lifestyle coaches. But I was really, I, I admired what they, your athletes, had to say. So I know that you have these like checklist items of like what your requirements are. What if I told you right now in this moment that? Dolly Parton's path to success is kind of one that you have to go on as well. If somebody doesn't believe in themselves and their ability to do something because of the fear that's based on zero data, based on just what could go wrong, not what has gone wrong, because we take the worst possible outcome and we make it our reality. Everyone in this room, there's about 60 people, I believe, in this room, just softly manifested their desired outcome. So it's a lot of energy. It should be pretty intense when you think about it because it simply means something to you. You know, my book, Perspective. Uh, when I wrote my book, it was like a journaling session. Jason said it's like a raw therapy session when you read it. Learn to write. Your thoughts will always confuse you. But when they come out on paper, you can really see the things you hate about yourself. And then you have a decision to make. Does that motivate you to change? Now maybe it's a darker look at it, but not all of us are motivated by toxic positivity. Some of us like to look in the mirror and have the edge against ourselves, and that's okay too. And sometimes that yields the biggest change I know for me at that personally. I was finally able to lay down my sword with myself and forgive myself after I wrote that book. And I don't think unless I took the time to really journal before I wrote that book, I would have been able to be brave enough to encounter that version of myself to be able to go forward. So you brought up vulnerability a lot, and um, I, I want to speak from a place that I, might be relatable, but also just relatable from a vulnerable sense. So, I think if you you asked me earlier, you know, starting out in coaching, so I I left out some parts. Um, in 2018, that was before I got into like my first like season of coaching. 
so I, was, I mean, I was coaching athletes, but not competitively at that point. And that year also too, I mean, my son had just been born. I had just gotten out of like a six month long marriage that really shouldn't have happened in the first place due to my son being there. You know, 2019 came around. I finally had gotten to a point where, you know, 2018 I lived in seven different places, um, just trying to figure out where to live. And coaching started really picking up going into 2019. I finally was able to get my first apartment. And the girl that I was dating at the time, she uh, she had some autoimmune diseases, and it, it was just it was a tough situation for her. When momentum was really picking up and going in regards to just business life, you know, security within my own self, and, and I guess financially, some of that autoimmune disease started to impact her mentally. And in March, I put my first athlete on stage. He won the overall. Everything went super well. April rolled around and she ended up taking her own life and uh, it, it, it was a tough thing to do anything and what's crazy is i remember the day they rolled around that i finally was like all right i'm gonna get up and go through this was i remember i was like damn i've got athletes like depending on me to, to continue to show up for them and, you know, that whole year it was something where it was just like, just don't look back, don't look back, man. Like, we're good, you know what I'm saying? Like, thank you, man. Like, thank you for <laughs> saying everything you said. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you only strengthen what I do and what my team does and all my businesses, so mm -hmm. thanks. I, I, would be, I would be willing to say that anybody that truly cares and has a heart is going to at some point be impacted by that and be questioning themselves within their head regardless of what anybody else is saying, especially, you know, if it's ever coming from any personal connections or relationships or current friendships, past friendships, it's impossible to always just ignore it and put it off and not get in your head and question yourself. And what, what I've really found is you treat everybody right, you do the right thing, you go out of your way to make sure and ask like, hey, you know, even if you didn't do anything wrong, is there anything I can do? You know you do all of those things that's the only thing that you can have peace at night when you lay your head down that, that's <laughs> yeah 100 i felt like a lot of them talked more about like general population and not necessarily like prep or bodybuilding but there were some there was definitely a difference. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your time if you're still here. Put what you want from me down below because I am working overtime on like this other interview series that I'm gonna be starting, which I've mentioned in the past, but I haven't like fully like disclosed it. It's called Fuck That's Heavy. And that is going to be with bodybuilders that I find inspirational, that I think that you guys can find inspiration from too. Some of them are gonna be pros, some of them are gonna be amateurs. And it's just like talking about their sacrifices and what they do and how they prepare for shows and just everything that goes into it. Sometimes it's heavy, like heavy on your heart, but then also they have to lift heavy weights. So it just kind of fits. And I'm just really excited to share their stories with you. So that's going to be coming up. But on the other end, what do you want from me? Like, I know in the past you guys said, just post whatever you want. But 
that still leaves so much, you know, like, do you guys just want day in the life vlogs? I'll do that. That's fine. Uh, because I do a lot of random stuff. Like I'm still going to the gym consistently. I'm still, I've added a lot of new, like seminars and workshops that I'm working with and on. Like we just went out to Laredo to shoot at Rockfit this Laredo with uh, galvanized productions so there's a lot of that stuff going on would love to share that and I am going to share that but it's just going to be a little bit later because I want to make sure that I'm going into my unreleased footage to now you know and then that also allows me to not drop the ball on you guys again because I'm hoping that this was the only time this year that I had a little break also, another thing that I'm going to be doing is following Brittany's story and journey along because she started her prep on February 1st and we're getting ready. She might be doing the Adela Classic, which I'm super excited about because I will also be working that show too. This weekend, if you are available tomorrow, join us at F45 from 12 to 2 p.m. It is a free workshop where we talk all things bodybuilding, all things prep hormone, um, HRT, hormone replacement therapy with Renew Wellness. And then we have st information about the upcoming natural show that Adela is throwing along with like makeup and suits and protocols, stuff that you need to know, and then also posing. So if you guys are available, open invite as always and then hopefully we are going to plan another one another thing to keep in mind is august 8th through the 10th there is a texas sports festival which i am super stoked about and that one is going to be in dallas at irving convention center so you know i will be there so show up show out get some cool photos for me and eli and then the rest of the battle up media team it's going to be really cool i'm just so excited and because I am working a lot more at these bodybuilding shows, I've definitely been getting the itch to like hop back on stage. But I know that that isn't necessarily the best move right now because I just want to focus on my videography photography stuff. But I can still have small goals, right? So I'm considering doing a little mini cut slash prep. I still don't have a coach. So I'm in the market for a coach. But I also don't want to just like hop into bed with another one just because, you know, I I went through two last year and I, I just don't want to continue to just like jump to jump to jump. I, I want to make sure that this next coach I'm with is somebody that I stay with long term. So, yeah, I'm I, I'm going through these shows. I'm definitely shopping around and looking and trying to build these relationships to figure out like who works the best with me and my personality and my needs and everything like that. And I think that's something that I'm always going to continue to show and vocalize with you guys because I feel like, I just feel like it's something that we can all learn from, right? And not just choosing someone because they have a great Instagram following, you know? Like it should be more than that. It should be the values that you guys have and the way that you guys communicate together and the way that they lead and everything again not bad mouthing any of my previous coaches by any means it's just they weren't the right fit for me you know and i don't think that we were the right fit for each other and that's okay and that's normal so anyways I'm done jibber jabbering. Like I said, if you have any suggestions, wants, needs, if you want food recipes, I'm happy to do them, but I just feel like you guys don't really care that much. So if that's a falsity that I have in my head, drop it down below because I have a lot of fun foods and stuff. And I am considering sharing my little cut series, but I'm not sure. So let me know. I love you all so much. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Okay, love you. Bye.